And we're back with the second to last conversation of Polkadot Decoded with Dan and Hutch from the Web3 Foundation who are going to discuss uh, Polkadot's large and growing community. Take it away, gentlemen. Awesome, thanks, Peter. Uh, welcome in everyone. Today, I'm gonna be talking about uh, the Polkadot community, uh, which is a truly global community. Um, so today we're gonna be talking about some of the people behind the Polkadot community and also some ways that you can get involved yourself in the Polkadot community. Um, therefore, this, this talk today is called the facts, faces, and flags of the Polkadot community. Um, some quick introductions, myself. Uh, my name is Chris Hutchinson, I'm the head of community and growth at the Web3 Foundation. Um, Dan Reeser is also gonna be on this presentation, uh, who's the community and growth manager at Web3 Foundation. I'm based out of Tennessee in the US and Dan's based in Texas. So nice to meet everybody. Uh, first off, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Polkadot community's path. Um, so this is kind of a, a broad timeline of the Polkadot community, starting from October 2016 when the Polkadot white paper was created, uh, and then the, the first Polkadot meetup back in July 2017 in, in Ibiza, Spain. Uh, fast forward to February 2019, uh, I started the Polkadot Ambassador Program, and, and then we all know back in July of this year, Polkadot itself launched all the way up to this Polkadot Decoded conference uh, happening now in December of 2020. Uh, moving right along, uh, we're, we're gonna kind of go into a landscape of the today's community. And this is gonna be a theme that's kind of recurring through this presentation. It's kind of, we're, we're talking, gonna talk about these six different uh, sections that are, that are related to the uh, Polkadot community. Um, ambassadors, developers, localization meetups, treasury, ecosystem teams, and governance. So first up is ambassadors. So we have a, a really awesome and vibrant uh, ambassadors community. Uh, we really like to say that the ambassador program is a core place where the community can come to connect, contribute, and learn. We've actually got over 415 ambassadors across 65 different countries. Um, so as you can see, this, this community is like truly global um, with 45% of those being developers and then the 55% of the people as part of this non-technical. You see this picture that we've got pulled up right here. This was actually at the Web3 Summit last year. Um, myself and Dan are actually in this picture and there's a lot of people as well in this picture that are part of, still actively part of the ambassadors program. Um, there's also 24 head ambassadors across different working groups and regions all over the world. So there's uh, plenty of different ways for you to get involved. Going straight into uh, kind of the details behind the ambassadors working groups and, and kind of every, how everything works there, um, wanted to highlight Joran, who Joran actually came into the ambassador program looking for a way to help out and um, did some really cool stuff around, brought us into a hackathon in Canada. He's based in Toronto, Canada and really kind of just wanted to find the best ways they could, could contribute. Uh, and, and a couple of weeks ago, Joran actually uh, secured a position at Parity Technologies. So he came all the way from applying to be an ambassador, wanted to figure out how he could contribute to the Polkadot community, um, and then all the way up to now getting hired on at Parity Technologies and, and working on, like on Polkadot full time. So there's, there's kind of six different groups that um, the ambassadors are split up into. Um, we've got developers, events, localization, content, community moderation, and advocacy. So you can see there's just a lot of different ways if you want to get involved in the Polkadot community for you to actually contribute. Uh, moving right along, I'm going to talk about developers a little bit next. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of developers in the Polkadot ecosystem, and there's a lot of different ways that you can get involved. Um, I wanted to highlight Mario Pino here from Seville, Spain who actually, I actually met uh, Mario back at the Web3 Summit um, before he's the creator of Polkastats, which is an analytics tool uh, in the Polkadot ecosystem. And I met him before he had actually created Polkastats. So I got to see kind of his journey uh, coming into the Polkadot ecosystem and then actually creating a tool that lots of other people use. Um, so that's really exciting if you're a developer. There's kind of all these different ways, if you're a developer, that you can get involved in the ecosystem. So there's core contributors to the repositories. Um, people that are developers are also uh, help run validator services. There's also ecosystem tools that people are building. Um, there's education that you can either 
learn about um, all this great technology or actually contribute to education yourself. And then of course, uh, we, we participate in and, and help kind of run hackathons as well, um, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about on these next couple of slides. Um, so we're actually just now finishing up with Hello World, um, which was a, a hackathon learn and earn style event for onboarding new developers. We were um, super inspired by the passion that everyone had during this event. Um, it was actually the largest Gitcoin event that's ever happened. Um, there were over a thousand participants and actually 1,820 projects came out of that. Um, and then moving right along, I actually wanted to talk about Brett Kolodny, who he um, actually came into the ecosystem and into the community uh, via Hello World. Um, and I, I wanted to kind of read this quote uh, that he gave us to, to let everyone know um, his, his experience and kind of um, what he's now up to. Um, so, so the quote from Brett says, I found Polkadot and Substrate through Hello World when my brother told me to check out hackathons on Gitcoin. Now I'm porting into people's machines, helping them with Substrate challenges and making the first pull requests of my open source career. Um, to me, this is a, a super inspiring story um, from Brett of how he came into the ecosystem via hackathon and now he's actually porting into people's machines and helping them out in the ecosystem uh, to build the tools of the future. Um, so just moving right along here, I uh, wanted to also highlight Hakusama, which was a, a hackathon that we had earlier this year. It was a seven week hackathon where 11 brand new custom blockchains were built during the, the seven week hackathon. And there were four open hack submissions that, that came through and there were 482 hackers. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Unique Network, which came uh, to light during the Hakusama. Uh, and they actually won the Hakusama hackathon. Um, they're a non-fungible -fung token platform. So it's just, we, we really enjoy um, people participating in hackathons because of all the kind of amazing tools and different things that come out of them. So it, it's a super inspiring event that happened there. Um, next up, I'm going to kind of pass the mic over to Dan, who's going to uh, talk a bit more about localization and meetups and talk about all the other ways that you can get involved in the community. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Thanks, Hutch. <clears throat> Good to see everybody here. Um, so this is Dan Reeser. Like, like Hutch said, I'm uh, part of the Web3 Foundation as well. Um, and I'm going to be starting off on the kind of third bucket of, of uh, the community that Hutch walked you through in the beginning. So. We think about localization and meetups um, kind of in three main categories. We've got meetups, which really is kind of in-person meetups and online meetups, which is more normal nowadays. Um, the local communities that people have built around the world. And then um, a lot of the translations that people have done to kind of localize the documentation or blogs that um, people have created for Polkadot. So starting with the um, local meetups, this is a picture of um, Hyung Suk, one of our um, kind of longest standing ambassadors and developers who also just recently got hired on by one of the parachain teams, Plasm. This is a meetup that they put together in Seoul, South Korea um, about a year or two ago. Um, and just one example of the 50 or 51 meetup groups we have around the world. And you can find all of these on meetup.com. So if you live in a major city around the world, it's pretty likely that we've got a group going in your city. So just keep that in mind. Um, for when hopefully the world kind of gets back to normal next year. Yeah. On the online meetup front, um, this slide is really uh, highlighting Zoe. So Zoe is an ambassador who came on, um, I would say probably about six months ago. And pretty immediately, I think it was within her first week or two, she stepped up to host a fireside chat with Utah, the CEO of Parity, who kind of kicked off today. And Zoe's done, I don't, three or four or five even um, events for us across um, Polkadot and Kusama, including this one here with Joe that you can see on the slide. Um, and Zoe actually just recently took on a new role that we created in the ambassador program for head of events um, for all the ambassadors in the world. So thanks Zoe for all um, your efforts on this. On the local communities front, um, these are four individuals around the community who have really stepped up and taken action to bring um, Polkadot and Kusama into their local community, whether that be in person or um, through Telegram or some other means of communication. Um, Xiao Gong from China has done a lot of work with the team that we have in China for Parity and Web3. So I um, appreciate all of um, their efforts. 
And then Lauro, um, my friend in Brazil, he's been doing a lot of work with um, the guys and girls in Brazil and also the Portuguese speaking community in general on Telegram. I think they've grown it to um, two or 300 people now from basically nothing. Um, CryptoDate has done quite a bit of work across uh, content. He's created videos for us that you can find on YouTube. Um, but he's also been helping us a lot with this structuring of the more formal Polkadot India um, kind of initiative that we've done with him and some other people over the past month or two. And then last but not least, we've got Wamel here. So Wamel has been with us for quite a while. Um, he was with the group of the Polkadot Espanol Telegram group back when we had about 20 people. Um, he's helped grow that to over a thousand people. Um, and has also really just been there to do um, online meetups and, and things like that. So appreciate all of Lamel's efforts over the, the past couple of years. So last in this section, we've got um, Grace from Osaka, Japan. Um, Grace is a very experienced translator, and she decided to bring those skills to Polkadot um, to help, um, you know, bring Polkadot to the Japanese community through translation. So. Grace helped us with translating the light paper, which I would recommend checking out if um, you're kind of more new to Polkadot and not so technical. Um, and then the wiki as well, which is um, quite substantial in, in length. Um, so that probably took um, quite a bit of hours for her on that. But if you are somebody who has a skill in a language, um, that is very valuable to the growth of Polkadot globally. And we're going to continue to make efforts to include more and more community members in the translations of our um, documentation and blogs and things like that. So moving on to ecosystem teams, Polkadot, as you know, is a is a meta meta protocol. It's a platform that is only um, that is only going to grow with the people and teams and projects building on top of it. Um, these ecosystem projects include, of course, subcategories of things like grants teams, um, substrate builders teams that Eric talked about. Um, and, and one example of that is Alexander here. So earlier, Hutch talked about Hakusama, one of the hackathons that we did this year. And the winner of that hackathon um, is unique networks that Alex's team has built. So Alex and his team in Moscow have done quite a bit of work um, across the, the kind of the ecosystem um, development kind of category. And we thank Alex a lot for his um, continued work um, in the ecosystem. This ecosystem slide is really, I'm not going to go into detail on any of these projects or logos. Um, it's really meant to just explain and kind of visualize how big the ecosystem is getting. Um, up to today, we've got, we've got projects coming out of the woodwork almost on a daily basis. It's, it's actually getting difficult to even keep track of. Um, you can check out a website called pokaproject.com. It's a community-led website that's kind of doing a good job of organizing and updating the, all the different projects, building in several different categories within the ecosystem. And some of those projects that are on Polka Project that you'll see were funded by grants. So we've got a very talented coworker at Web3 Foundation named David. Um, so David has done a great job in um, leading this grants initiative, expanding it, um, kind of improving the process to the point where now we have kind of two levels of grants. We have open grants where people are getting up to 30K in funding and then general grants up to 100K. And the graphic here on the right was created when we hit our 100 project milestone, but just included it here to give you a feel for what kind of projects are getting funded. Um, these can be more technical projects like blockchain specific things like bridging or scaling. Um, but then also more, um, you know, industry specific or use case specific grants for things like finance or DeFi or gaming or um, supply chain. Treasury, as was also covered earlier today, won't get into details around Treasury. Um, but as you know, Treasury, the Treasuries provide an on-chain mechanism to, to get either KSM or DOT to fund projects over a wide spectrum of um, categories. So a lot of these projects, as you would expect, are technical in nature being proposed by developers. But um, surprisingly, there's also been some, um, you know, different projects coming, coming about. So we have one person, Jessica, who got approval from the Kusama Treasury to do an art project in Vancouver, Canada. Um, and then recently, Miguel, who's also an ambassador 
um, he came into the ambassador program and kind of surprised us with this proposal of, hey, I want to create a documentary. I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. Um, so we helped, uh, we helped him, and, and I know Raul helped him quite a bit through the treasury process and um, got his documentary funded, and that is actually live on YouTube um, today. And I believe that they're also hosting a film showing um, in Portugal um, as we speak. So thanks, Miguel. Now, the last section that we wanted to cover is governance. So this is um, an area of the network and the community that you wouldn't necessarily think of first, um, but is becoming, as you saw in the last presentation um, with Peter and Raul, a, a very, um, very active and vibrant uh, subsection of the community. Uh, one example of that is Shevdor, who's basically the definition of an OG uh, within the ecosystem. He's been around for a while. He's done a lot of different things um, on the development side, but also more recently, he's joined the Kusama Council um, and has been, been helping a lot in that regard, whether it's voting for different proposals, helping give feedback on um, different you know, proposals for how we should change and evolve the network. Um, the involvement for you um, watching this could really boil down to a couple things. Voting, um, we're encouraging people to begin voting and getting more involved in that aspect, but then also voting for council members and then even potentially becoming one yourself. Um, we'd love to see more people from the community getting involved. So to wrap up, um, just rehashing the six categories that we really broke the community down into. So all these uh, six kind of subsections of the community and, um, can basically, you, there's a lot of ways for you to get involved in all of these and it's too much to provide links and details on um, each one of these themselves. So I'll put in the chat right now a link. Um, we've created a blog post for you guys to be able to go in and say, hey, I want to be an ambassador or I want to get involved in governance. Um, this blog post will really give you a way to go in and find all the necessary links that you need to get involved in any of these um, parts of the community. So with that, I'll hand it over to Peter, who's going to get you introduced to um, Gavin and Laura for their for their talk. Thank you very much. Uh, coming down to the, to the end here, I'm going to start the next broadcast and we'll see you in with Laura and Gav. Thanks, gang.